And we're live. Hey, we're live. Hi, everybody. Today we have a special guest, Obert Sky. So if you wonder how I met him, um, I was at a conference in, I don't know, Louisville, Kentucky or something. I was at a conference and uh, he and I were in the same booth. Four of us shared, shared a booth. Obert Sky, Roland Smith, uh, Michael Spradlin and I. And for like uh, two or three days, we were just crammed into this booth showing teachers our books and selling our books. So by the way, welcome all of you out there, remote learning. I decided a few weeks ago, instead of just sitting around complaining about the virus and how we can't get out of our homes, we would try to do something fun for you teachers. So every day I've tried to get a different author. By the way, tomorrow we have Ralph Massiello. He's going to do advanced drawing. And Friday we have um, the four authors, Michael, Mike Artell, Mike Shoulders, um, and Steve Swinburne. But today we have Obert Sky. There he is. So, by the way, I'm sitting in South Boston, right near the right near the airport, right near downtown. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. All right, Obert, where are you? Hey, first of all, thanks for having me. It's it's an honor to be here. Um, I'm in Arizona, so it's it's warm. It's going to be 90 some odd degrees, and but I'm inside where it's not quite as warm. But two it really days ago, it snowed here. Yeah, it's isn't snowed. that crazy? Yeah, from all over. I was I get, a bike, and all of a sudden, I was being pelted by ice. It was like great, you know. Yeah, we swam yesterday, which is kind of a wimpy quarantine. So I uh, I almost feel bad about it. It was very nice. So where did you grow up? Tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I kind of grew up all over, but I didn't grow up too far from here to begin with. Um, um, mostly Southwest, but I spent a big t big part of my time growing up in Tempe, Arizona, which is sort of where I'm, we are now. And um, But I lived all over. We lived um, in Colorado and even spent some time in Europe living in Austria um, with my family and um, but since, uh, since I've been a grown up, New Mexico, Idaho, and, uh, now back to Arizona and we, we're really happy to be here because it's, it's warm and totally and, uh, different than New England where I grew up. Totally different. I mean, I would love to live in New England and eat lobster with you every day, but, uh, it is a little cold there at, at certain times. So yes, totally different. We'll yeah. trade rattlesnakes for lobsters anytime. We'd love to have <laughs> That's a trade I would easily make. Yes. In fact, I think of you all the time because Jerry, your books are some of my, my son's favorite books and we never read the one about scorpions versus because we actually have them here and uh, it's too close to home. Really? Yeah. It's the only one we skip because it's, uh, I don't know. They you ever heard of a false scorpion? They don't, a scorpion? Have a tail. they don't have the spot. They don't have the, um, the uh, stinger on the tail. It's a false scorpion but it no. looks exactly like a scorpion. So no, but I was at someone's house and I thought it was a toy and I went to pick it up and it, whoa, it went no. at me like what? Who's all scorpion? Do you ever see those? No, and whose house was that? <laughs> that you're, you're picking up scorpions. Roland Smith or someone like that. But, oh, yeah. you know? no, no, but I'm, so I've never heard of about your family. Say it again. How many kids do you have? Uh, we have uh, five kids. And they're all kind of old, except our, our youngest, who is uh, eight, about to turn nine. Eight, my perfect age for my books, right? Oh, it's, it's like ideal. I mean, you've, you've you signed them all the, over. We call that the sound barrier. You broke the sound barrier. I have four kids. So oh, yes. Yeah. None of my siblings had more than four kids. Interesting. And, um, all right, so go ahead. Tell us, um, were you a school teacher? Did you no. I, tree? Did you paint no, houses? I, I like the day be before you started writing teacher. books, what were you doing? I wanted to be a school teacher, but um, no, I, I, I mean, from a very early age, I knew I wanted to be a writer and whether it's uh, a fault of my parents or not, they were super supportive, maybe to a fault. And I just, I love the idea of writing, um, just expressing and getting things out of my head in a way that others maybe that didn't talk to me or I didn't know would then have this sort of connection with. So I started from a really, a really young age and, uh, always with the goal of writing full time and, you know, being published. And I, I you know, I guess I'm lucky to have achieved that. And uh, so in yeah. fourth grade, did you think I want to be a writer when you were in yes. eighth grade? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. 
I wrote my first book when I was four and it was about horses and it wasn't very good, but it was just, it was, I was compelled. I, I, I'm one of seven kids. And I think, I think for me, I'm one writing, of seven. you're Did one you of seven. That? I'm one of seven. I'm the second oldest. No wonder we're best friends. The, um, yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of people to grow up with, but, uh, it was great. And yeah. um, I, but, I, but fighting for attention, you know, it wasn't always there. So writing was a cool way to get people to stop and read or think, know what I'm thinking or act out what I was feeling or create what I wanted to. But uh, yeah, I, I just I don't remember a time when I didn't want to be a writer or didn't like the act of storytelling or uh, sharing that yeah. world. When people ask me, I didn't start writing books till I was 32 years old. I had little kids at the time and I got the idea from my little kids. But I think when I look back growing up, I would tell stories like if you came over my house at the beach, I would say, uh, here's a starfish. It has five legs. You know, their skin is really rough. You know, like, is that what you were like as a kid? Were you telling stories? Yeah, I think I was a good liar. So like I was constantly <laughs> telling stories and, you know, at wanting to create, I, I guess I've never been happy with reality, even as a kid. Uh, I wanted it to be funnier, more interesting, more exciting. I, um, more, um, I wanted more, I wanted more friends. I've lost you for a second. Are you still there? I'm right here. Mm. Did I lose him? Well, I can, no, I, I'm, for some reason my screen, I must just press the wrong button. You can hear me though. Yeah, you look great. Yeah. So, so I just always wanted to, uh, you know, always wanted to be a part of um, uh, what was going on and, and creating worlds that were more exciting than the one I was in. So it's, a, it's, it's, being a writer has been a great thing for me. So tell us when you started. Um, literally, I, I was I was writing young. Published. Uh, my first published book came out about 15 years ago, and so um, I, you know I went through school, I went through normal stuff. I went I I wanted to do a few different things. I thought about being a teacher. Thought about I loved I loved comedy, so I was into like a lot of that stuff that went around that. Uh, but uh, when I finished my first book, even though I'm not a person that's like bursting with self-esteem, I just, I knew I had something and I thought, oh, I'm going to try to make something out of this. And, um, it kind of, kind of just took off and I, I was very fortunate. And now 35 books later, I'm, uh, you know, I, 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 I rarely step back and look at it and be like, but when I do, I'm like, wow, it's exactly what I wanted to happen when I was a little kid. And, wow, uh, 35, yeah. I had no idea. Are they all novels? Um, yeah, yeah, they're all, yeah, they're all novels. And uh, yeah, and some, I mean, some are longer, some are, some I have, I've, I've done quite a few uh, lengthy fantasy novels, imaginative kind of fiction novels, and quite a few um, sort of half illustrated drawn books as well. Um, so I've done quite a few things over, I have pictures I could show if I want, do you want me to show you some pictures? Sure, we love to. We want to know all about you. Okay, I'll then let me. Sh I'll show you a few pictures. Let's see if I can make it right. Oh, see, this is already. It's all already. I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, that's me. So who cares? Uh, this is me as a little kid. Yeah, and with much better hair. And this is me of dreaming of being friends with authors when I grew up. <laughs> so, yeah. If this if this was reversed, if it was me in there and you as that my fifth grade picture. <laughs> it's your fifth. Actually, it's a couple years ago. It's a good yeah. picture, Jerry. Yeah, but um, some of my books are I have like the the Levin Thumps series and the Pillage series. What's which it are called? Levin Thumbs. Levin Thumps. Eleven yeah. Thumps. Yeah, but it's wow. often called Levin Eleven Thumbs or Levin Thumbs, but it's Levin Thumps. And um, it's sort of a big high fantasy series. And then I have stuff like the Creature from My Closet, which is more, you know, which, half drawn, half drawn. Are these your first book? Uh, Eleven Thumps was my very first book, yeah. That was my first so book, first series. Can you describe it briefly? Like, say you ran into me on the street and I said, hey, tell me about your first book. What, what would you say? Yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's, about, a, it's about a kid who, who discovers the existence of foo which is the space between the possible and the impossible. And also where dreams are sort of, dreams sort of go to become something extraordinary. And so it's a classic sort of kid, tough life, 
doing some remarkable things, but in a whole new realm of this place called Fu where anything is sort of possible. And so it's, there's no dragons or trolls. It's all sort of uh, brand new things. Fu's kind of an amazing place. There's sycophants and grants and tharms and just different things. So it's kind of a high- Did you invent Fu? I'm, oh or yeah. That... Well, I mean, are you saying it doesn't exist? Because that's- No, did you incredible. invent Fu or is that like a common term that I never knew? No, I invented it. It's, it comes from the it comes from the word fooey, like impossible to believe, hard to believe, foo. Okay. And it's also it's also a reference to uh, one I'm of my Italian. favorite. I put a D on it. Foo. Yeah. No, no, no. No, <laughs> people always introduce me. Some or lots of times people will introduce me and they'll say, uh, "Obert really loves food," and it's supposed to be foo, but I do love food, and uh, so it works either way. But yeah, the books but that was look beautiful. They look beautiful. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm gonna reach on the screen and grab it. Yeah, you should, or better yet, just order up a few for all your millions of fans. But the, um, but yeah, no, you can see the first two covers, Love and Thumps and Pillage, they are lovely. They're, they're done by an author, uh, I mean, an artist, a great artist named Ben Sowards. And then the third book, Creature from My Closet, which isn't as pretty, those are my drawings. So you can see, I probably shouldn't put all these up here to compare, but yeah. Wankenstein? Some, Wankenstein, mm-hmm. Yeah. Or Wankenstein, if that's better, if, if you like. Wankenstein. Yeah. 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 That was a fun book to write. And then I have other, uh, then I have other series, the Geeked Out series or Mutant Bunny Island. And um, I have like a break off series from Beyond Foo. And Go backwards. I want to see those other ones. Go back. Go back. Right All right. Yeah. Uh, Potter Wookie. Potter Wookie. Wookie. So, yep. so the Creature from My Closet series is when I, is largely I take uh, two classic books or movies or things I cared about as a kid. And I, and this kid has a closet that he throws all the books in he never wanted to read. And so those, those things mix together and create these odd combinations of characters that come out and make his middle school life sort of harder than usual. So the Creature from My Closet series is six books and Potter Wookie is one of them. And one of my favorites that I have written. I liked it a lot. Okay. Um, and then Geeked Out is yep. a series. Geeked Out is like um, a diary of a wimpy kid, uh, dystopian diary of a wimpy kid. And it's about four, um, four geeks who one day while crawling around in the dark at their school um, accidentally are bitten by something, but um, they don't get, they get super, they get powers, but they're not really superpowers. They're more like average powers. And so they form a group called the, uh, um, I can't, they form a group with these sort of the league of, of average and mediocre entities, uh, which of course spells lame if you take the starting letters. And uh, lame has to do a lot of uh, kind of amazing things to help save their school at the end of the world. League of average and mediocre entities. Yes. Yeah. Lame. I think I, I think I'm in that group. Yeah. No. Yes. You would be an awesome. Yeah. You have, well. You have many many gifts, and maybe they're mediocre or maybe they're brilliant. But yes, you can gladly join. But it's a perfect. Uh, quarantine book because it's sort of the end of the world in a funny way and uh, I love driving and then um, Mutant Bunny Island is if you like mutants or bunnies or islands you'd probably dig this series it's just out of control funny I hope that's the intention and I, I love writing that as well it's a good series Mutant Bunny Island yeah 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 and there's three there's three in that and there's six in the creature series and two in the geeked out series that would be fun to write and then I have um, uh, Witherwood Reform School was a fun is a fun series and it's uh, it's about a school on the top of a mesa and two kids are accidentally dropped off there by accident and sort of getting out of that school is important to all mankind and I loved writing that and uh, wow and Witherwood then, beyond yeah. food wow so yeah. not only you can be, be you can be in food but you can be beyond food you can be beyond yeah there's borders yeah you can be beyond food very perceptive Jerry. The, um, yeah. Yeah. And then the, uh, my newest series is the Wizard for Hire series, which is um, uh, book, the first book came out a couple years ago and I love writing this series. And it's, uh, it's kind of a series where you're, you're left as, a, as the reader to determine if the wizard is really a powerful, amazing person or just someone who maybe has some uh, you know, problems in their head. And, um, and also kind of a uh, realization that sort of magic is everywhere. And I, I loved writing this. And book three just came out last. Uh, all right, last hold on one second. Go back for one second, all right? Yeah. 
So that cover, did you have any any say in the design of the cover? Yes. In fact, there's a story about that. Did you say I want it to look like this and I want that bird and yeah, let me see license plates and yeah, you like yeah, that? Let me see if I can let me see if I can do something really quick. If you'll be patient with me, I wasn't gonna do this, but let's see. Um, behind the scenes kind of thing. Uh, this was um, when I first sent when I first sent this in, the publisher um, the publisher I was super excited to see what the publisher would do with the cover because I really love this series Wizard for Hire. And after yeah. waiting a long time, this is what they sent me, and uh, I was sick about it. Like. It's not even a scene from the books. It's all wrong. The feeling is wrong. I, I don't even understand. I don't really even understand what they were thinking totally, but it was just a rough sketch to begin with. And, and everyone in my family said, don't say anything. You'll just sort of ruin the deal. But I love this series. So there's just no way this could represent it. So the first thing the next morning, I called the publisher and um, said, I'm just sorry, but I just don't like this cover. And they said, oh, they think they understand. And so they decided to go a different direction. And the second direction looked like this. And I, I liked it, but in the, in the series, you know, the character has a beard and um, for some reason there's stars on this guy's hat and there was no stars in the book and just little things like that. And then so that for is, the, go ahead. In my, in my picture, the head's cut off the guy, is that intentional? Yes. Very intentional. We, 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 I wanted, I don't know. I wanted people to really think about what this wizard or Rin would look like. And so, yes, that's, that was pretty intentional. So we kind of liked that idea. And then when it, as they were refining it, it got better. A little more of the face. You could see more of Oregon. This series takes place in Oregon and it's important, yeah. to, important to the series. And the stars are gone. Is that so Mount was, St. Helens or Mount Shasta? Or Mount yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so we're getting closer, but it still wasn't quite right. And then when we finally got even closer, the only, the, the only question was uh, what color the robe should be. And the publisher had gotten a lot of input and then they called me and asked what color I thought the robe should be. And I told yeah. them that I thought the robe should be the color of the robe that's mentioned in the book. So they went with the uh, actual right color, which of course is the final cover. So, I mean, it, it kind of came a long way, but I, I loved, um, I mean, I love how it ended up, especially compared to the first sketch of what was going to be. It has, it has sort of the right feel and uh, that makes me happy. I'm curious, who published this? Uh, this series is published by Shadow Mountain and they're out of Salt Lake. Uh, the Creature from My Closet is uh, Macmillan and Henry Holt. And um, uh, uh, Simon Schuster has some of the 11 thumps and then um, Harper Collins is the um, mutant bunny island. Very nice. Hey, we have some uh, we have some chat going on. Do I like so, chat? Uh, someone, uh, Susan from Colorado, says the creature books are great. Oh, and, and, that's uh, a huh? Susan Hutch. Yeah, Annette she's a good show says wonderful new books to explore. So there you go. You nice. Got there. Nice. Hello, Susan and Annette. I think I need to read this series. That's what it says. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, Wizard for Hire is a nice series because, um, well, I mean, it's one of my favorites, but uh, I like how it ended and it's uh, it's got a really cool, it makes a really cool point, I think, at the end. So hopefully that translates to the reader. But it's uh, it's been a fun book to write. And this book just came out last week and it was book 35. So. Wow. Uh, 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 Jamie Donnelly, who's one of our secret weapons behind the scenes, says she grew up camping in Mount Shasta. So there nice. you go. Yeah, that, and that, that was actually we have, her. We have Linda Edwards says, uh, I find it interesting that Obert's books are published by all different publishers. Well, I've used Scholastic and Childsbridge and Sleeping Bear Press, but you know. Yeah, my intention, my intention wasn't always to do that. And I, I, my agent and I questioned it from every, at every single time, but it just felt some of my, some genres are a little bit different, like the, the, the drawing kind of others, simple kind of ones, not yeah. that they're simple, but they're a little younger. And, and then, you know, there was, there was desire and I've, uh, I could write a lot. And so when the demand was there, I just, uh, 
we, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's a complicated thing that I don't enjoy because having multiple published, I want to make sure that they all are happy and all get credit for what they're doing. And, and I can support and publish and I mean, promote as much as possible, but the, uh, it's for the most part, it's worked out to be pretty kind of magical. So, uh, I don't know what you don't want me to ask you, but I'll ask you this. How did you think of wizard for hire? Were you just, were you yes. lying in bed and it just hit you or were you driving in the car and it just hit you or is it something that took years and years and years? Well, I don't want great, to question. great question, Jerry, of course, but the, um, I think, I think I had, I was, I did brainstorm about this for a long time and it was an idea I had, um, just it, it, a lot of it has to do with the woods in Oregon and this, this, uh, the Ozzy, who's the main character, he sort of, um, grows up alone in these woods. And um, I think the, the idea is sort of like, at some point in our life, most of us sort of wish we could have a wizard that would solve things for us, or at least I did. And um, okay. it sort of came from that idea and just a ton of brainstorming, but it also was my love of Oregon and uh, my love of uh, just, I had a mom that was always sort of searching for magic stuff and always thought life was so magical, even the simple things. And so, I can see an argument for where there's just magic in sort of everything and keeping that sort of unknown or having people to figure out if magic is sort of real was sort of this whole idea for this series. And yeah, I like how, how it came together. I was very happy. Wow. Now, how many pages is that book right there? Uh, 416. Wow. So You've been working hard. Yeah, these are, these are long. I mean, most Levin Thompson and, uh, these kind of books on, are most around three or 400 pages and the creature series are my geeked out and bunny Island are about 220 pages ish. So yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, it's would you a, write I mean, one at a time or would you write three or four or five at a time? Um, I really write one at a time and almost every, every book I write, I'll, I like music. So I'll have like one album for that book. And I listen to that in the whole entire time. And I finish the books, and they sort of have this influence of from something from that. But I, I um, I mean, I'll I'll revise something else. And since I have multiple publishers, I might have to do some revision or some other things. But for the most part, I work on one book at a time. Yeah, good question. I was Jeff. telling someone that they asked me uh, when I was writing my books, what would I do? And I said I listen to music, and then yeah. I started to look at my alphabet books like a song, like the. Uh, alphabet was the baseline and then the words were like uh you know uh the main melody and then the uh interesting facts were like the background singers oh, I like I, that. i'd be like listening to the beach boys and i'm thinking of how multi-layered the songs were and right. then i started to multi-layer my books you know like uh in my beetle alphabet book uh the, i i considered like the lowercase letter, one layer, the uppercase letter, another layer, and then the text in the book, another layer. And then the, and then the, uh, we put in the actual size of the Beatles, that would be like another layer. And then the illustration was another layer. And then uh, we hid Beatles song titles in the Beatle book, you know? I don't know oh, if you, you hide any secret messages in your books like, does the does the sentence ever spell out other words? You ever done oh, stuff yeah. like that? My, yeah. all my books have secret things. If you take the first letters of each chapter, or you take find hidden words. Um, the my pillage trilogy, which was about dragons. I yeah. mean, all, the first book was all the lyrics of a certain. All those chapter titles are the the sort of the names of songs from a certain group. And book two is a different group, and book three is a different group. And so, I constantly hide stuff. I love hiding stuff in hopes that. Uh, Certain people will find you on it. Oh yeah, people. Yeah, in fact, I've a cool thing for me is like I've signed CDs at book signings. People will have caught what I've done, and they'll bring in that CD, and I'll sign it to some for some other. I mean, it's just a silly, dumb thing, but I love when people catch like stuff that uh, I didn't think anyone would notice. Wow, isn't that great? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that so great. Yeah. But I'm happy to hear, I mean, I'm happy to hear you kind of do the same thing. In fact, my, this latest book I'm working on right now, I'm listening to Pet Sounds from Beach Boys and uh, just nonstop and it's uh, such a good album. No kidding, wow. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. So it's good. 
Good company. Yep. Um, let's see. Yeah. I can tell you Somebody really quick. Said, what's that? Go ahead. I can tell you really quick. Uh, if you want to have some slides, I can tell you um, how I started writing, if you'd like. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. What if you said no? That'd be, you're too gracious to do that. All right. So um, I, don't, well, I don't know. They made fun of me when I made this list. They, you know, when I first <laughs> got on today, they said, you know, I was telling them I'm disorganized. And by the way, I call myself a scrap writer because I write on menus, I write on phone bills, I write on, you know, uh, on my, on my, well, I used to write on my Blackberry in the hotel at night, you know, and my iPhone or in notebooks, I write everywhere, like totally disorganized. Every now and then I meet a really disciplined writer, what I would call a disciplined writer. For you to have 35 novels, you must be a very disciplined writer. But uh, someone said, what are you going to ask him? So there's my list. <laughs> Where did you grow up? How's your family? Tell us about yourself. What were your first books? How many books did you write? And uh, anything special about yourself? But I forgot to say, what was your writing process? So go ahead. Well, well no, I mean, I'm, not, I'm just as disorganized as, as uh, anybody. It's, it, that, I've not been a great person at finishing things in my life, except for some reason I can finish books. But um, I remember early on, you know, hearing Stephen King would write three hours a day every day except for Christmas and whatever. And I always thought, oh, that's probably a good thing to aim for. And I used to really try to like write consistently for a few hours every day. But now as it's gotten busier, I have to fit it in sort of everywhere I can. So a lot of hotels, plane rides. Um, but I do most of my main writing in my office at home with some music and most of my revision and editing uh, for publishers and stuff that they, that they need from a plane or in hotels. So it's, uh, I still prefer to write in my office. It's my favorite place to write, for sure. Just, yeah. It's peaceful. That's great. Yeah. Or a library. Where, where do you write? Do you write at home? You write Jerry? everywhere, yeah. Yeah, everyone. I have to say, though, there's nothing like finishing a book when you're really jammed and you're 99% done and you're really in trouble. And you, There's nothing like a cross-country flight where you just can't go anywhere. Yeah, I know it helps. It helps for sure. I took a train once for my, one of my series way back and just took a long train ride and just rode on the train. And it was one of my favorite things I've ever done just to be captive, you know, couldn't do anything else. I mean, and this self quarantine time is a kind of a good time to write too, but yeah, I find, I find that my mind isn't always at ease. And so it's, it's a little more, sometimes it's a more of a struggle. There's been yeah. days where my editor said, I need this finished tomorrow. And I say, can you wait one more day? I'm taking a cross country flight. <laughs> you know, I think I could really finish it then, you know? Yeah. But, How many books do you have? It's like, it's like 2000. <laughs> I can't remember. I it's about, close. I have about a hundred picture books. Yeah. That's just, just so awesome. I don't know if you knew that, but I did write one book of short stories. There it is right there. Yeah. I own that. And I've read that to my kid, Hank. And uh, it's, you signed it for me last time we were together, which is makes, so I'm sort of offended that you don't remember that. But the, um, but yeah, it's, a, it, it's, it's really- I, probably, I thought about that, that I probably gave you one or something. But I, uh, I also Maybe. have books like this, which I don't think you have. Count, count to 10. No, I'm, I'm pretty good at counting. Well, like, look, one red. Yeah, no, it's- Blue. You know, I'm almost embarrassed to show it to you. No, yeah, no, that's- uh, uh, no, you you and I have spent time at the tables just looking at your books, and uh, they're amazing. I was just say, uh, a long way from foo. A book that counts one to ten is a long way from foo. I, I think I would say that. Yeah, but I'm Go just ahead. hoping, I'm, I'm just yeah, hoping sure. that your books lead into mine. Yeah. Yeah. So they're good well, books. I hope to turn kids on to your books, you know? Yeah, for and sure. I, thousands of pe uh, teachers see this uh, video. Yeah, no, so, I hope so too. I mean, it's it's always, you know, I've over my career, I've sold millions of books and it's always funny because I still meet so many people that just have not heard of them. I don't know if that's funny or sad, but um, it's, I always like the, I always like the person that hasn't read them because it's someone that maybe there might be a new connection. And uh, yeah, so hopefully your vast influence will- I uh, drop names, but I recently mentioned you to a big publisher and they go, oh yeah, we're, we're looking at him. That's what huh? they said to me. 
You should. You um, should I like that. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah. All right, I interrupted you, so go ahead. What was I? You what was gonna, I saying? <laughs> you were going to show us your writing process, or? Oh. Well, I'm, I'm just going to tell you. Oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to tell kind of go over why how I became a kind of a writer or what I what I thought I was going to be, if that's yeah. all right. We'd so, love to see that. I remember as a kid, you know, everyone was always asking, you know, people, it seemed like everyone around me liked to read. It was a, if, if you were to ask who likes to read, it was a hands up question. But I always I always felt like that was kind of a hands down question for me because I just didn't like to read. I had a little dyslexia and it was just not something I enjoyed, but I wanted to be a writer. And I, and I figured I would just write the books that other people would read. And that made perfect sense uh, to me, still does on such certain days, but um, I just didn't like to read, but I was fortunate to have a mother. I mean, reading was one of my least favorite things, of course. And I was fortunate to have a mother that um, she knew that if I wanted to be a writer, I was gonna need to be a reader. So she would try a lot of different things to sort of help me want to read. And I remember one time she told my older brother that if he could help me learn to love to read, she'd give him 20 bucks. And so my brother went down to the library and he checked out a book called How to Hypnotize People by Using Cats. And it's a real <laughs> book, it, ex it existed. And, and uh, in the book, it says that if you sit and you stare at cats, and if you say the words over and over again of what you wanna learn to love, that will kind of hypnotize you and help you learn to love those things. And so my brother used to make me sit in our kitchen and just stare at our cats and say the word read over and over and over. And uh, it never really, it never really worked. In fact, it just sort of made me dislike my cats. But, um, but fortunately for me uh, at my school, we had this librarian at elementary school and uh, she, she was great. And she found this book and she felt certain that uh, if I read this particular book, it would change how I felt about reading. And so she would show up all over the school trying to get me to read it. She'd pop up in the cafeteria and be like, Obert, read this book, you're gonna love it. And I would say, no. Or she'd show up on the playground screaming, Obert, read this book, you're gonna love it. And I would say, no. I remember her waiting outside the boy's bathroom with that book and just saying, Obert, read this book, you're gonna love it. And I would say, no. Or she'd be on my bus after school Ober, read this book. You're going to love it. She was kind of, you know, stalker librarian, but very nice. And I was always saying no to her. I just did not want to read that book until finally one day I had taken the bus home and she had not been on it. And I got off the bus and then walked to my house. And when I opened the front door, there sitting at the dining room table with my librarian was my, mo my mom. With my mom was my librarian. And she had that book in her hands. And she reached out kind of laughing and said, Obert, you know, read this book. You're going to love it. And I felt busted and then, you know, my mom was there. So I took the book and I read it. Now, how old were you at the time? I would, just, I would have to be like probably third grade. Yeah. Third or and so I read it and I, I, I took the book reluctantly and read it reluctantly, but I loved it. And of course the book was um, a book we all know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And it, ever since then, I really loved, I, I loved to read. I mean, suddenly like candy made sense. I could see how the author took the, idea from beginning to end and develop characters. And I just really loved, um, it, it just changed everything for me. And um, I just went on from there really to, to have that combination of a love of reading and then a love of writing. And I just have not put down my pen since then. And it's really been a kind of a fun ride. I mean, you know, now 35 books later, I'm just like, uh, I'm amazed and, and thankful for all the people like that, my librarian and parents that you know, really propelled me forward and believed in me even when I wasn't sure what I was doing. Very lucky. Nice. Nice. So is that something you would show kids if you visited a school? Oh, yeah. Yes. I, over the last 15 years, I've done, I don't know, 8,000 school visits. And yes, I mean, the, the, the stalker librarian is definitely a story I, I tell a lot of the time, just because it changed my life. And most often kids will ask, you know, what's, what's your favorite book? And now I have thousands and thousands of favorite books, but you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory changed everything. So, you know, it's, uh, it's just, it's gotta be my favorite book because it just became so important to me, which is why when I did the Creature from My Closet series, the first book was Wonkenstein, Wonkenstein because uh, it's part Willy Wonka, part Frankenstein and, uh, those were just two, two books that I really loved. So I wow, changed. That's great. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. Someone asked, have you been able to write more during the past few weeks? Well, you already sort of answered that. Yeah, it's been you a know? weird thing. Like my mind, my mind isn't as, uh, isn't kind of where it should be, but I am, I am doing some, some very hardcore writing at the moment, trying to at least. I don't know if you want to uh, answer this one. Linda Edwards, a teacher, I, I don't know where she's from, but she says, Obert is a very unusual name. Is there a story behind the name? So I don't know what you want to answer about that. I'll answer any question. Or, or My real name is, in case you're wondering, Gerard. Gerard is a good name. Yeah. And it came yeah. from my grandfather, Gerardo, and That's his father, name. Loretto. My real name on my license is Gerard Larry Pallotta. That's crazy. I don't know if you've ever told me that. I love that. The nuns, used to, the nuns used to say to me, it can't be Larry. It has to be Lawrence. I go, nope, it's Larry. And they go, no, 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 it's got to be Lawrence. I go, nope, it's Larry. But so there was Loretto Mazzola, my great-grandfather, Gerardo Mazzola, my grandfather, and then me. My brother, my older brother, was named after the Pilata side, Joseph wow. Guido. So we had Guidos and we had Josephs and we had Gerardos. But uh, I'm Gerard Larry. So, but, you know, my mother just called me Jerry my whole life. And when I started writing books, I thought, I'm, everyone calls me Jerry. I'm just going to be Jerry, you know? Yeah, but that's cool. Those are all really nicely textured names. But yeah, Jerry's good too, because Jerry's like everyone's friend, which is kind of what you are, everyone's friend, but it's a good name, yeah. But Obert yeah. Sky is a family name. My, I had relatives that grew up on the Isle of Skye outside of uh, Ireland, and uh, I had a, a great-grandpa, Bert, and great-great-grandpa, Bert, and my great-great-great-grandma my, uh, would call him in from the fields and say, oh, Bert, oh, Bert, and Obert kind of became a family name and passed down. And that, that may or may not be true, but the, um, but yeah, that's, that's where I stand with it, but no, it's, it's worked out pretty well. Um, and it's a nice, it's a good name. I think it's a great name. Yeah. Thanks. It's no uh, Jerry. What's that? It's no Jerry. It's not like Ben and Jerry's ice cream or no. Tom and Jerry. We should be over and Jerry's ice cream. I I love it's it. better because I don't know any other Oberts. So I think it's a fantastic name. Yeah, it's, you know? it's, uh, yeah, I, I have met very few Oberts. In, uh, in Scotland and parts of Europe, it's a little more common, but um, yeah, there's very few Oberts. Great. Um, okay, what, tell us something special about yourself that no one would know about. Oh, that no one would know? I'm pretty, I kind of a blathering blabbermouth, so most people know most stuff about me, but. Um, Maybe that's not a good question. Just no, 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 no. I, I, let's, By I, the I way, wanna... you can ask me. We can flip this and you can start asking me stuff, you know? Yeah. So yeah what... Like the history is like this. The first few shows I did, I talked about myself a lot. Right. But I thought I got to stop talking about myself or there, no one's going to watch. Well, I can tell all the a lady that says, why don't you ever talk about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so you're welcome to ask me anything you want. Well, I can, I'll say this. When, uh, the first time I met Jerry was actually not in... Louisville it was in Arizona. We were down here for the uh, fest, uh, the conference here, and um, I instantly knew that you were a good person. But one of the, my favorite things and how I knew is, is that the uh, convention was over, and Jerry takes out his suitcase, and just starts changing his clothes right there in the booth, and I'm like, this is a this is a quality person. This is somebody I want to be friends with, and uh, I love that. It was just it it's uh it was such a cool. A moment for me because you were just you're just uh you're open to being exactly who you are and it's something i strive to be so it was a fun moment and since then you've done tons of things just like that jerry and uh you you're consistently unique which is great man well i don't know what to tell you <laughs> that's uh, weird <laughs> that's i weird. probably was getting dressed to take a cross-country flight from arizona yeah no that's what it was you're like you just don't waste time it's uh, it, i mean and you didn't, it was perfect. It was like a, it was a life-changing moment for me. So thanks for doing it. Yeah. And for everyone that walked by the booth, they, everyone that walked by was quite entertained. So it's a good thing. I don't know if that's a true story. You might've made that up. You're a novelist. Oh. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that one's exactly true. The, um, but yeah, no, it was, I mean, I, I uh, it's, 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 
I think one of the coolest things about being an author is I'm always constantly surrounded by authors and, and book people and book people are just great. And uh, some of the authors and have, you know, who have become friends like yourself, Jerry, I mean, now that we're super, super good friends. And I just think it's a, you know, it's a cool perk because I, I most of them are very yeah. interesting, but very few of them are as interesting as you are. So I think that's cool. I find everyone it. really creative. You know, yeah. like when you first start out, you, you kind of thinking, well, you know, you don't, you don't know what to expect. I think the people say to me, when you meet other authors, what do you think? And I said, I found that they're all really big readers. I, right. I found that was the common thread. Like when kids say to me, I want to become a writer, they ask me what my advice would be, you know? And I, I always say, geez, every author I've ever met is a big reader, you know? Right. And of course, my story is I didn't become a reader till I was, tw I didn't, I didn't consider myself a big reader till I was 26 years old. From 26 on, I was reading a book every week, you know? Wow. I just, I couldn't read enough, you know? And uh, people say to me, <clears throat> what's your favorite book you ever read? So, did you ever read the book Self by Ernest Shackleton? No. That's my, that's my children's book, but that's one of my favorite books. And of course, one of my favorite children's books, for those of you out there, Hey, you could tell me a couple of your favorite books too. Um, my favorite children's book. Do you know Imogene's Antlers, where the girl wakes up with antlers on her head? Oh yeah, sure. David, it's a great. Book. It's a great. David book. Small wrote that. I love David Small and his wife uh, Sarah Stewart. I've met them, and oh, yeah, I should try to get him on the show. I never even thought about that. I got to get him on the show. That's but, a book um, I haven't thought about forever. Yeah, very cool. You know that book? Yeah, I, I do. I, but I yeah. haven't thought about that book for. When was that written? It was written about 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that book. I know? used to love um, the Bill Pete books as a kid. You know, I don't know, like Rufus the Dragon and Doofus the Dragon and different books like that. He had some really amazing books. I always liked the odd books as well. Any story book yeah. that was different. Yeah. And uh, so there you go. There's a grown up book I love, South by Ernest Shackleton. And Imogene Zandler is a children's book that I love. And uh, did you ever see Pam Munoz Ryan's book called um, uh, Hello Ocean? Um, I, I, I think we all, I, I think we all you know, my, one of my kids is a huge fan of hers, as, as is everyone, and myself included. But I remember she came to one of my kids' schools a long time, a while ago. And uh, um, it was life changing. And I, I believe we own that book, but I've not read it, no. I think it's one of the most beautiful children's books, you know? When I read it, I'm like, oh man, I got a lot of work to do. But That's funny. Huh? There you go. Okay. You got anything else for us? I could, right. Yeah. What do we want to, what do we want to say? No, I mean, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here, man. I'm, I, uh, I think it's, um, I think what you're doing is a, is a really good idea and it's kind of such a unique time to be alive, right? This is, I talked to my 80 yeah. year old dad and he's like, nothing like this has ever happened in my life. And uh, so to be experiencing this is kind of crazy, but on days it's almost, it's almost interesting. And on other days it's, I'm ready to go outside. I ride my bike every day. I don't go out. I pretty much stay in, but I would go out to get some food or something, but uh, I pretty much stay in. And uh, I do ride my bike every day and to ride down the streets of Boston with no cars, with people with masks on, and you just start to think I'm in, I'm in a strange movie or something. Yeah. 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 I'm in a strange Obert Sky novel. Thank you. It's he like, was right. Like, Who yeah. really I've, exists? I've been He's saying right. this for years. Yes. Thank you. No, it's, it's a, it's a surreal thing. And it's uh, hopefully we can all look back at it with interesting memories at some point. I think I'm going to start a rumor that the Foo Fighters took their name from your novels. Yeah. You know, Yes, I think you. I think you should, and I would like. I'm. I'll like anything that to glom onto anything like that. But the um, when I first I wrote, think Foo, I think I'm going to uh, say that under this bridge, Obert Sky invented the Foo in Boston, and the yeah. Foo Fighters were here, and they and they stole his idea. Please, and we and we all must have stolen it. What World War II vets? That's where it comes from. Foo Fighters, at least they were the the fighter pilots would see uh, lights. And they would call them foo and they would they so they were called foo fighters these mysterious lights but 
that's not where I get food from. But uh, once Levin started taking off, it was like everyone would make that connection with Foo Fighters. And so I quickly learned all about them. Yeah, wow. All right. Hey, wonderful day. Wonderful hanging out with you. It's hard to believe. It seems like three minutes, but we've been going on. And uh, I think we'll call it a day. What do you think? Oh, man, I, I couldn't imagine a person I'd rather hang out with. It's uh, It's been very, very nice. So thank you're, you. You're, you're awfully kind. Huh? Yeah. We'll try to have you back. Anytime. I could be your I'll side. I'll try to have you back with some other authors so we can all like uh, argue about some. Yeah, um, that's fun. It's of, always fun to talk over everybody. I love that. We'll, we'll think of some publishing thing and we, we can all discuss it. You know, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Thing, you know, well, let me see if there's any more notes here. Uh, Linda says Imaging the Antlers is a great book still very popular in school and then uh, I'm just now seeing the part about the librarian love it have a look laugh said I met Obert in Warrensburg how do you like that did I ever meet you in Warrensburg I was only there once no 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 I, no we've not hung out there yeah but I do know, I do know Susan. She's a great person. She's a, she was a fun person to meet. I had to twist her arm into getting one of my books, and now she's been an, a really kind fan. Oh, someone says love the shout out to your mom, and to your your librarian. Yeah, and, and it says, and I can see it now. It says dyslexics unite. Yeah, that's I I've done quite a bit with dyslexic dyslex crowds, and I still get some dyslexia when I'm tired or. Um, things are kind of out of control, but uh, I, I have a lot of um, it's that's that feels like family because it's something I definitely struggled with as a kid. So nice comments, super nice comments. I'll trade my ADD for your dyslexia. How's that? All right, perfect. Let's let's gotta, swap a little, let's swap a little of each. Uh, yeah. Let's shake on that. Here we go. Let's shake. Yeah, fist bump. It's quarantine. Hey, yeah. thank you, Obert. Thanks for coming on. You're terrific. I hope to see you out in Arizona when all this travel ban gets lifted. I'd love to go out there. Yeah, I'm coming yeah. to your place for lobster, so yes. Oh, yes. Bring your eight-year-old out here. Pull the traps yeah. with me. Thanks coming. Yeah. And thank, thank you, you so everybody. Much. It's been, it's been All you awesome. remote learners, we hope you enjoyed the show with Ober at Sky, a great guy. And I am going to read all your books one of these summers. Yeah. Just yeah. so you know. Holding you to it. Great. Bye, everybody. Thank you.